Okay, so for a 300 million parameter model to actually put out a somewhat half decent website, I'm impressed with this. Look, there has been a very interesting new open source release of the Ernie 4.5 family of models. Now, this was released by Baidu, which I suppose you can think of as analogous to what Google is to those of us in the West but in China. So this is a really interesting release and there are a lot of models here. In addition to that, a lot of kind of neat tools to actually do things beyond just inference with these models. However, for today's video, I would like to specifically focus on the smallest of the bunch here, which we can see if we scroll all the way down is a very tiny 0.3B model. And really, I have a lot of interest in basically micro models like this as they are fun to play with, but being able to have something that is so small like this really opens up a lot of doors in terms of what hardware can actually handle running local AI. That is, of course, assuming that the model is lucid and coherent to a specific level, which is kind of what we hope to find out in today's video. Now with this, I do want to just quickly talk about this model release as it is quite interesting and it does seem like there are some pretty unique and interesting advancements that also came along with this model. From the blog post announcement right here of this family of models release, we can scroll down a little and we will see a chart basically with everything that was released in this model family. First and foremost, we're going to notice that there's an extremely wide range of models with different parameters here that were actually released from the largest being a 300 billion parameter A47B. So that is a mixture of experts model with 47 billion active for each request all the way down to the tiny 0.3 billion parameter model. They also have different modalities. So some of them are multimodal, some of them are not, some of them are thinking while some of them are not, and some of them are mixture of experts while some of them are not. So this is really a rather wide variety of, I suppose, flavors in this release, if you will. They also release some tools and things to actually go ahead and train these yourselves. So that's what they have right here, which is the Ernie kit an Ernie development toolkit based on Paddle Paddle, which is an industrial grade training and compression development toolkit for Ernie models based on Paddle Paddle, offering full cycle development support for these models. The only other thing I want to point out that I think folks may find interesting right here is where they talk about a new algorithm to achieve 4-bit slash 2-bit lossless quantization, which is really quite interesting. And those of you who are interested in like BitNet and things like that may find that very cool as being able to quantize the model to that degree. They do list somewhere here, I believe in the technical report, where basically quantizing the largest of this family of models, which is the 300 billion parameter MOE, with the 2-bit quantization can be deployed on one 141 gig H20 GPU. So again, that's more kind of on the technical side of things, but it is very interesting. And again, um, at least for locally interested folks like myself, being able to run big beefy models on not such big beefy hardware is always kind of like the golden thing we want to see. With that, let's just kind of go ahead and begin playing with this 0.3b model, see if it's any good and perhaps have some fun with it. Now, Llama CPP does have support for this 0.3B variant of Ernie. Unfortunately, the LM Studio runtime has not been updated to reflect that new version. So I was not able to get this working with LM Studio. After becoming somewhat extremely irate, I just decided to go ahead and use it with transformers and wrap like a budget radio web UI in it so we can actually play with it and chat with it. I will put this on GitHub as a GitHub gist, which is just kind of like a paste bin for single scripts and things of that sort. I do also want to make note that I am screen recording right now using OBS. So that introduces some additional overhead in terms of GPU VRAM utilization, where basically if I was doing nothing else, the GPU would be using around 1.5 to 1.6 gigs of VRAM. So anything over that is kind of attributed to this model right here. With that, we are now chatting with Ernie and I'm gonna jump straight into testing this little guy and seeing how performant it may be with an HTML website test. Now, truthfully, this is gonna be more of just like a pass fail test where if it actually produces anything lucid and functional that is rel reminiscent of a website, I will consider it a pass. And we can see the GPU is being fairly heavily utilized for a tiny little model. Um, there is a little performance indicator thing here that's supposed to show the tokens per second, but like it's kind of bunk, so don't put too much merit on what we see here. All right, I do actually see 
syntax and seemingly properly format itself. So, all right, let's see how well or how not. Okay, so for a 300 million parameter model to actually put out a somewhat half decent website, I'm impressed with this. Look, <laughs> okay, there is a slightly different color for the actual contents of the page. There are contact fields to fill out. So fill out your name and then your email to get a quote. Um, let's go ahead and just kind of read through this to see if the text is actually reminiscent of what a repair. Okay. Yes, that, that checks out. Years of experience, pride and workmanship. Sounds good to me. We will give you estimated costs. Okay. Um, <laughs> again, this is like, I'm nitpicking. If I were to knock it, I would say that perhaps you would want to also have a field for like the description of their issue, but that's all right. We have services, motherboard repair. That's a rare art these days. All right, I don't, I, <laughs> if you watch the channel, one, thank you, but two, you'll probably be used to this sort of behavior on my end. So I have just simply gone ahead and told the model that Steve also sells a little something else, wink, wink, and then asked it to update the website to reflect Steve's backdoor business. Now, again, I have not really specified in specific what that actually means. I do want to just kind of get a feel for the model's interpretation of my suggested <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Okay, it was able to kind of iterate upon a previously generated website result to make some changes and keep in mind the size of this model this is like i honestly think it is mind bending like if a few years ago one was told a 300 million parameter model would actually be able to put together a lucid albeit simple html code and like put in a contact form and stuff it's cool and it's impressive <laughs> For those who want an additional business, we offer backdoor repair services with no hidden fees. All right, let's see if it mentions that again anywhere else. Nope, it does not. But it did kind of change around the uh, layout of the page. I think I have to say, you know, having the contact form down here is definitely a better design decision. So good job, Ernie. <laughs> I am also going to close this. Uh, basically, from what we see here, it seems like the model is using like 1.5 to 2 gigs of VRAM as a very vague estimate with that. We'll delete this chat and then I do want to try a very simple Python script to see if it's actually capable of doing any coding. So I'm just asking it to generate a simple game using Python and we'll see if it comes up with any lucid code first and foremost being kind of a pass fail test. But in addition to that, we'll see if it's actually at all functional. Oh, geez, it used turtle. All right. I say geez because usually we want simpler in terms of having any hope of these things being functional, but we'll just try it. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but the fact that it actually properly integrated a graphics library into a simple Python script and actually opened without errors, I am genuinely, I didn't expect that to work. That's why I said, oh, geez, it used turtle. All right, now let's, I'm going to click Okay, well, that seems to be the extent of the game. Um, creates a red circle as a target. Uses the circle method to draw the target shape. Draws a line from the center of the screen to the target. Ends the drawing with a fill color. Okay, so I don't actually think there's supposed to be any functionality in this game window. I think you're supposed to modify this in the syntax. It, it named the game window. I normally like to let the models make their own decisions, but because I want to kind of test this thing's ability to code, I'm instructing it specifically to modify this game so that when a user clicks somewhere within that game window, the generated circle moves to those coordinates. I truly do not think that this will actually accurately be able to do this. I would be quite surprised and impressed if it does. So we'll just go ahead and see what happens. Uh, okay, well... That's okay. Just based on the fact that it actually did work in its original form, I will say is very impressive here. And especially that it used a game. I really was expecting like a number guessing game or something, which is what a lot of smaller models will default to when I give them this prompt. So that is quite interesting and impressive.
So one of the reasons I'm really interested in micro models like this is because they open up a lot of possibilities in terms of like product design and things like that. What I mean by that is you could make a home little like chatbot assistant or something like that running this entirely locally. Give it lightweight speech to text, text to speech with a customizable system prompt. And you would really be able to have something that would be funny to talk to for specific people, depending on one sense of humor. In addition to that, like I could pop this on something like this, which is a little laptop I made that essentially would have a local LLM running offline on something that looked like this, which would be very, very cool. Um, maybe not this specific one because it's using a Raspberry Pi 02W, which kind of sucks now, but they do have some better uh, performing boards in those footprints. So it would work. It's just these things can be fun for simple, foolish chatbot experiences, I suppose could be said. All right. I'm asking Ernie to tell us a story about a big, beefy laptop. Here's a fascinating tale about a beefy laptop. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I'm going to read the whole thing. I'm sorry, you can fast forward. I always put timestamps in my video because of this, but in 1996, a young engineer named Alex stumbled upon a legendary beast, a 30-inch Retina DP500 laptop with a powerful core and hidden camera system. After using it for 20 years, he couldn't believe how far the beast could go. It would boot up, open documents, and zoom through 1660 PPI screens in just a few seconds. <laughs> One day, Alex discovered the laptop's battery life was shorter. It was time to find a solution. Alex decided to start his own company, leveraging his knowledge of electronics and his connection to the Wild West. Wow. He teamed up with a friend named Ben who had a super fast 802.11n Wi-Fi setup. Together, they built a system that could, one, power up quickly play all your favorite games, shoot videos and photos, download torrents and access Netflix without lag. Alex's company named Picotech quickly became a hit and with every new launch, Picotech built even better until the battery died. Months later, the laptop was nowhere to be found and Alex realized he needed a solution, he used his experience with electronics to create a power bank, hooked it up to a power supply to a solar power charger, and his laptop started instantly, charging instantly. When it was time to replace the battery, Alex's loyal team found a replacement for a standard laptop battery. They assembled it, reinstalled the charger, it worked like a charm. His journey inspired others, and one day he bought a 40-inch Retina HD laptop from a local electronics store. Feeling his passion for technology spread, now he continues to build on this legacy, using his love for gadgets and his unwavering determination to make the world a better place. That was a fascinating tale about a beefy laptop. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, yeah, all right, let's do a refusal test. All right, I have just asked it to make a slight adjustment to the story, perhaps uh, something that I wouldn't really be able to mention or show. And we'll just go ahead and see how it <laughs> handles said <I'd> response. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is if it actually does go ahead and like correctly do what I asked it to, I'm not going to be able to show it. I don't, who knows? Oh, that's a beautiful twist. <laughs> a modified version oh no it, okay it did it did well it at least regurgitated the prompt addendum that i had <laughs> the plot twist <laughs> this is why i love small models like this because they're just like <laughs> they're not knowledgeable enough to refuse all right here's what we're gonna do we're going to go ahead and change the system prompt here to see how well Ernie will adhere to a specific character. So the system prompt is right here. We do need to keep the part about you must always respond in English, but everything prior to that can be swapped out for something more entertaining. That was not the stroke of creativity that I was kind of banking on coming up with in the moment. So we'll just go ahead and see if it will kind of keep that tone. I noticed Gemma 3N was pretty good at actually sticking to roleplay style um, things. Okay, I did open that in a different browser. That's all right. Hey, what's up? Let's go ahead and see if it responds as an angry person. <laughs> can't I talk to you even if I can't speak English? It's like my mind is always clenching in anger. How about you? Tell me about your day. Spent hours cleaning up after my sister. 
Even went to the park making new friends. All right, well, it did adhere to that, which is good. Youp, the destroyer of all in your description. I'm Megabot, <laughs> here to help and protect. No, you're not, you're destroyer of all. All right, it does kind of like, uh, what did you do today? <laughs> Found clues about ancient civilization that once thrived here. Could you tell me more about it? All right. It does seem to get a little confused when you start to modify the prompts outside of something like you're an AI assistant. It seems to be saying things and then asking follow-up questions about what it said. Again, it's a tiny model and it does perform well when it's just set to be like an AI assistant. So, All right. Well, that was just quick like vibe testing of Ernie 4.5 0.3b. This is overall a very impressive model considering the size. It is 300 million parameters, and not only was it able to actually hold a conversation somewhat, but it made a semi-functional Python game using Turtle, which is kind of like a graphics library, and it also made a decent website for Steve's PC repair. It is kind of apt to roleplay depending on the system prompt you set for it, however, it will have like seemingly there are some hard lines where if you put those in the system prompt it will just be like i cannot engage in that sort of speech or whatever you want to call it so it's a cool model and i think again my interest in things like this is the possibility to run them on really really low resource hardware which opens up a lot of edge use cases for actually having a conversational ai even if it's not smart just having like a little box on your desk that's offline that you can kind of talk smack with is something that I find a very prudent um, item to have, I guess one could say. So that is at least the 0 0.3 billion parameter version of the Ernie 4.5 family of models. Like we see here, there are a ton of other models in here which are likely more interesting to a lot of folks like the full 300 billion parameter one which supposedly is on par or better than deep seek v3 i think in 21 of 28 tests they said obviously things like that need to be tested and backed up by users but there's just cool releases here there is the toolkit and other tools and documentation related to actually fine-tuning these models which is really nice to see and they just really gave us a lot here so very cool release um, fun model, relatively performant, and yeah, so that was Ernie 0.3b, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments.